So, so far we've learned two ways in order to establish the overall enthalpy change for a given reaction. The first way is experimentally or empirically using something called a constant pressure or coffee cup calorimeter. The second way is to use Hess's law of heat summation where we take and manipulate a series of provided equations to arrive at our target. We can apply Hess's law to a third way in which we use the heats of formation or standard enthalpies of formation for the compounds involved in a chemical reaction to arrive at the overall enthalpy, which is actually a process that's going to take a lot less time than using and manipulating Hess's law. Now what is a standard enthalpy of formation? Well, standard enthalpy of formation is basically just uh, an a reaction that, uh, or an equation that includes the enthalpy change for the formation of a particular compound from its standard elements. Now, the standard elements, or the standard state of those elements, is really going to be the state in which they're found under a standard set of conditions. Now, what that really sort of means is if we take a look at the periodic table, whatever state that element's found in is typically going to be its standard state. So let's say for the formation of carbon dioxide, we are going to have carbon, which is a solid in its standard state, and oxygen, which is a gas in its standard state, will form one mole of carbon dioxide, and then we'll represent the enthalpy change for that particular reaction as a part of that thermochemical equation. It's important to note that for a formation equation, we always only have one mole of the substance that we're forming there. So it's a molar value, and that's why you see the uh, enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole, because it's per mole of that particular substance that we're looking at. Now, how does that help us? Well, let's take a look back at using Hess's law for a reaction such as the formation of slaked lime from calcium uh, oxide and water. So we're given a set of reactions, as we are in most uh, Hess's Law problems, and we have our target equation. And if you've gone through this, what you would find is that you're going to have to perform manipulation to the first reaction, you're going to have to perform a manipulation to the second reaction, and then algebraically we are going to have to cancel out everything that appears on both sides of the arrow to arrive at a value for our target equation. But if we analyze this a little further, what we're going to notice is that if we take all of the heats of formations of the products and subtract that from the heats of formations of the reactants, that's going to allow us to establish the enthalpy change for this particular target equation. And we can use this information to come up with a representation or an equation to help us figure out the enthalpy change for a reaction if we know the heats of formation of each of the substances involved. And that is the sum of the number of moles of the enthalpy change of the products subtracting the sum of the number of moles and times the enthalpy change of the reactants is going to give us the overall enthalpy change for that particular reaction. So let's take a look at actually using this in our same example. If we were to take the overall number of moles of our products and subtract that from our reactants, this is what it might look like. So we're going to take the number of moles of each. Now in this case, it's one mole for each of them. If we had uh, formation equations in which we had two moles, or if we had to manipulate it to form uh, two or three moles for our target equation, then we would have to multiply our heats of formation by the appropriate number of moles from that target equation. But in this case, our target equation, as you can see, all the ratios are one to one to one. So we don't have to worry about multiplying these by one, but for illustrative purposes, I'm gonna put it down here. Then we can sum up the products, and in this case there is only one product, so we don't have to sum up uh, too many products, and then we're going to take the sum of the reactants as well. And plugging it into this equation, we can arrive at the exact same result as if we used Hess's law, but you can see that it only takes three lines as opposed to a whole bunch of reaction manipulations to figure out the same enthalpy change for that identical reaction. So in some cases, that is the cases where we have appropriate information for the heats of formation for the reactants and products involved, we can use these enthalpies of formation to help us solve for the overall enthalpy change of a reaction.